Hi, I'm Tim Burdick, pastor of Community Bible Church in Glendive, Montana. Today's midweek message, we're going to be taking on the question of why do we go to church on Sunday? Why is it always Sunday? And if we did meet together as a church body on a different day, would we be wrong to do that? Well, there's a number of different angles that we need to look at this from to come to a satisfying answer. One of the first things we want to look at is the term the Lord's Day. Oftentimes we call Sunday the Lord's Day. And we need to first look at and say, why do we call it that? And is there some significance to it that needs to figure into our discussion? Well, the first mention we ever hear of Sunday being called the Lord's Day is in the Bible itself. Revelation chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. It says this, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like the sound of a trumpet, saying, Write in a book what you see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. So this is the setup. This is the very beginning of the book of Revelation. And John saying all this stuff that's about to come out, this all started coming to him while he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Well, what exactly does he mean by the Lord's day? Well, some theologians have tried to mean, tried to say that John was talking about Easter or some others have suggested that maybe he was talking about the second coming of Christ. But neither of these answers are, are very satisfying ones. And in fact, the vast majority of biblical scholars believe that John's simply just talking about Sunday, the first day of the week. And in fact, if we look at the usage too, uh, historically speaking, we'll talk about that in a minute, this also bears out uh, with the idea that John's simply talking about Sunday. So here it is right here in our Bible, Sunday called the Lord's Day, but this is the one and only time we find it in the Bible. And in fact, John has written these words at the very end of all the things that were ever written that show up in our Bibles. And so it's interesting that here's just this mention at the very end of biblical history. But apparently this term catches on. John wrote what he did, but then uh, in 115 AD, a man named Ignatius wrote a letter uh, to some people, and in it he was urging them to live not for the Sabbath, but for the Lord's day. So apparently this term caught on pretty quickly. We have Ignatius using it in 115 that we know of. Five years later, an uh, early almost church manual called the Didache gets written. This is 120 AD. And in the Didache, it urges Christians to assemble and worship together on, guess what, the Lord's day. So the term the Lord's Day catches on pretty early. And as we said, it only appears in the Bible the one time. But interestingly enough, the name Sunday, the, our common term today for the first day of the week, that's not in the Bible at all. It doesn't show up one time. And in fact, calling the first day of the week by the term Sunday doesn't show up in Christian literature until 150 AD. This is 35 years after Ignatius wrote what he did. In 150, a man named Justin wrote his famous work called The First Apology, and that's the first time we see the word Sunday used at all. So up until John coined this new term, everybody just called Sunday the first day of the week, and this was a very Jewish thing to do. Judaism uh, in the Jewish culture calls days one through six the first day, the second day of the week, the third day, and so on. Sunday through Friday are just simply known by their respective numbers. And Saturday, the Sabbath, is the only day of the week that was named from a Jewish perspective. So early on when the New Testament is being written, mostly that's how everyone referred to Sunday as, the first day of the week. Now this is trivia, but it's also important trivia because the name the Lord's Day sounds very imposing. It sounds really heavy. And because of that name, we can be tempted to impute a reverence for the day that the Bible never originally called for. Between the time that John coined this term, the Lord's Day, and today we've built up a lot of ideas about the importance of setting aside a particular day for the Lord every week. And I think this goes back to the name, the Lord's Day. Well, we're supposed to honor the Lord, and if he's got a day named after him now, then surely we're supposed to honor that too, right? Well, I get the sentiment here, and it's probably admirable sentiment, but it's not biblical. Really, it's kind of the opposite. 
The Bible seems to argue for us today to not practice uh, picking out and honoring special days at all. Romans chapter 14 verse 5 says, One person considers one day more sacred than another, another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Galatians chapter 4 verses 9 through 11. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you're turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. And there's more scripture that we can look at. I could go on here, but I think it's clear. The Bible does not tell us that in the church age, we're supposed to set aside a special day of the week and have that be our holy day. That's Old Testament law stuff. That's not New Testament church age requirements. Now, the church eventually, we'll see, started doing just that. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But when we read the New Testament and, and see the church get established and get rolling, we can't help but notice that there is not a single command. There's, there's not even an inference that Sunday is supposed to be some kind of holy day that's worthy of special reference. I mean, we're children of God. We should be honoring our Father every day, not just on Sundays. So what gives here? If the Lord's Day isn't meant to be some special day where we don't do other work and just focus on God for the whole day, why did it turn into that and how did that happen? Well, as we've already said, probably by name alone, there was some inspiration to elevate this day beyond just uh, what you would expect for a normal day. But there's also been this big push for a very long time to turn our day of worship into a kind of Sabbath. The Sabbath day was an Old Testament day to be set aside for the Lord, and there wasn't supposed to be labor or anything else like that going on. And so the temptation for some now is to model our Sunday after an Old Testament Saturday. But that's not good theology because we have been freed from the law. And when I was planning this message, I really struggled with how much time to talk about this part. And I think we just uh, can't go into too much depth here because... This completion of the law and, and the continuity of morality between the Old and New Testaments probably deserves its own lesson. So we're not going to spend any more time today developing why we don't have to honor the Sabbath beyond three things. One, we recognize that we're not bound by the law anymore because Jesus completed the law. Two, in the New Testament, we don't see the early church treating Sunday as a Sabbath day. And three, as we've already established, there's no equivalent New Testament command that we can find anywhere in our Bibles. Okay, so if the Lord's Day is just a name and not a command to treat the day any differently, then how did Sunday worship become a thing? Well, we don't know fully. In the Bible, it doesn't actually come out and say that all of the first churches met every single Sunday, but regular Sunday worship as a standard is implied in more than one place. We can look at Acts chapter 20, verse 7, and 1 Corinthians 16, 2 as good examples of this. So Sunday worship isn't a biblical command, but we can make some good educated guesses as to how this became the day. First, Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday. So having a church service on this same day is a nice way to honor that thing that he did for us. Second, we're starting the first day of the week worshiping God as a body. And there's really no better way that I can think of to get things started off on the right foot for your week. And then third, addressing the question of why, if Jewish worship predominantly happened on a Saturday, why not continue that tradition into Christianity? Well, as we read through what the apostles were doing in that first generation of the church, we see the synagogues were still acting in full force. And some of these key New Testament Bible characters would go into the synagogue on Saturday and they would teach and they'd evangelize the Jews. So Saturday was a day of focused outreach for many of them, not a time set aside to worship with fellow believers. So with Saturday evangelism uh, to the Jews out of the way, Sunday morning could be spent preaching uh, to an assembled group of Christians. And to further our non-Sabbath Sunday morning argument, here's how the Sunday morning worship practice probably did come about. When church began, we were still living in a time where 
there weren't official weekends off. Everybody worked on Sundays, and especially a lot of the early Christians were servants or other poor people who probably couldn't have taken the time off from work. But they could assemble on Sunday mornings before work and after work as well. They could come together and they could worship with their brothers and sisters at that time. And so that's probably where this tradition got started of church on Sunday mornings. It was probably just a matter of convenience that caught on. There was no mention of taking the rest of the day off or doing anything else differently on Sunday until around 200 AD when it was suggested by a man named Tertullian. But even that didn't gain a lot of traction until about 321 AD when Emperor Constantine officially gave everybody the day off on Sundays going forward so they could spend their day worshiping and doing other church-related things. And man immediately began layering tradition on top of tradition and rule on top of rule, and the church wound up institutionalizing worship practices about Sunday that actually drew people away from correct biblical doctrine. But that devolution is a story for another day. So that's it. This is how we've come to worship on Sunday mornings and what that means and what it doesn't mean. I hope this has been helpful to you. At the least, I hope it's been interesting. Let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to learn about your word and, and learn about the early church. And God, I pray you would give us wisdom from the things that we've talked about so we might be able to be better sons and daughters to you and might be able to better understand your mind and how you would have us worship you effectively. We love you and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have any questions about the things that we've talked about today or if you'd like to learn more about God's plan of salvation, feel free to drop me a line at pastor at cvcglendive.org. Till next time, Lord willing there is next time, may God bless you and your family.